nada com demência social. Ele é um menino. I didn't film a lot this week out of respect to the people I was with, but I'd like to share a few thoughts and scenes because I believe so many of you will appreciate what I just experienced these past seven days high in the mountains in the north of Italy. My friends have a farm and castle in a spectacular region called Trentino near Lake Garda. They harvest grain and other crops and usually run camps for sick children adults with cancer, or events celebrating music and nature and history. You might remember when I volunteered for their camp for Romanian kids with haemophilia a few years ago and made an episode on this channel. This year, with COVID making camps impossible, the family invited me up with Guido to stay for a week with their cousins and children. How can I describe it? This week was how I imagined tribal families or even communities 100 years ago used to live. Different generations all cooperating together, living off freshly grown produce, no television, practically no phones, no restaurants. We ate out only once after hiking to the top of a mountain, a hearty rustic meal prepared by a local family. No, sulla lepre. On the way up, we were sweating so much we could wring out Guido's shirt, like dripping wet. And now we are freezing cold. It's so cool. Yeah, it's like we are walking on clouds, in clouds. It's like we literally can't see. <laughs> At one point, we even went along to the annual local grass cutting contest where skilled men come from the surrounding mountains to compete with a scythe to cut grass the old fashioned way. Caught up by the, uh, the atmosphere and all the excitement, we actually dared Guido to sign up as a contestant and compete. At least how to do Three, two, one, via! It was just this group of kind people all taking turns to cook dinner, care for the babies and toddlers, hunt for mushrooms in the woods, hoe the field for potatoes, water the vegetable garden, build fires for barbecues and homemade pizza, play music and sing by candlelight. And instead of exercising in a gym or worrying about some diet, there was just good, healthy team sports out in the fresh air every single day, the kind where you don't even notice the hours passing. 
It seems that so many families these days of all nationalities or socioeconomic backgrounds are often fighting with each other or maybe have just forgotten how to come together over food or nature or sport. Every day we cooked and cleaned together for about 23 adults and children. We played tennis, basketball, soccer, bike rides, hiking in the mountains. We baked bread, wood-fired pizza, cakes, ate yogurt from cows in the meadow near the castle, collected eggs from chickens wandering near the house. We played trivia and charades while consuming copious amounts of local grappa and my four-tier torta al chocolato. We take turns to push the bambini on the swing or lie on the grass watching for shooting stars. It is just a week and then everyone goes home to different parts of Italy or Europe to work, to stress, to their individual households of two or three. If you spoke to Marina, the mother who runs the farm, you would feel exhausted just hearing how much there is to do to keep a property like this running and operate non-profit events. Of course, there is also the reality that the mothers of the babies and toddlers are mentally and physically exhausted. Others are stressed out from the pressures of the corporate office. Some are worried about their future job security. But for this week, this suspended moment in time, it felt to me like this is how we were supposed to live. The young, the old, everyone with different skills, working life out together, changing nappies, telling stories over a fire, living off the land, cooking and cleaning as a team, remembering that we're stronger when we put our different skills together. Some are good at nurturing, others are good in the kitchen, some are leaders and get everyone up and moving, others just keep the mood light and jovial with constant jokes and banter. Every afternoon, after lunch, and every night after dinner, I watch this group of diverse adults all washing dishes in this old rustic kitchen. Some of us wiping, some scrubbing pots, some cleaning benches, some packing up leftovers, and everyone chatting and laughing and making fun of each other. And I don't know why, but this is my favorite moment. I, I think to myself, surely this is how the soul weathers life's ups and downs best in a little community like this. Or maybe if it were longer than a week, people would start complaining, friction would arise, egos would flare, humans inevitably bicker over who is contributing more. I don't know. But I'd, I just feel so grateful to this family of three sisters, Sof, Ollie and Thea, and their mother Marina, for a little glimpse into how simple life can be sometimes when everyone comes together and for a moment all is in harmony. Uomo che tiene sei figli, ha chiesto una casa, ci danno consigli. Mentre assessore che Dio lo perdoni, dentro a un lotto ci tiene pesoni. Ma poi basta una mossa e una voce, ma che Cristo ti deve una croce. Con rispetto si è fatto le tre, pulito spremuto, pulito caffè. Ah, oh, che bello caffè, pure in cancere sanno fa. La ricetta che ci c'era, un paio di cielo ci ha dato mamma. Ah, oh, che bello caffè, pure in cancere sanno fa. Quello che sogni, qualche volta 
lungo ai pensieri strani con una mano una mano ti sfiori tu sola dentro la stanza e tutto il mondo fuori mi scriverei una canzone d'amore E poi all'improvviso sei arrivata tu, non so chi l'ha deciso, ma hai preso sempre più. Bravissimo!